Welcome to Flip Lesson 96 for the fifth grade as today we look at what are known as functions. All right. Functions basically are, are things you've really dealt with before. They're patterns that you can follow, that you can identify. And in the end, you have what's known as an input. You put a number into the pattern and you get a number out of the pattern. And um, we can look at the examples to see how this works. So, for example, it says find the rule for this function. All right, so what is the pattern? Then solve for the missing value. Okay, so we see that when we put a 3 in here, right, we started with a 3, we got a 21. Okay, just from your top of your head, do you see a relationship between 3 and 21? And hopefully you can say, well, 3 and 21 are related because 3 times 7 equals 21. Okay, so that might be our rule, but we can't be sure until we see the pattern repeating. Okay, so now we see 7 going into 49. Is 7 times 7 49? Yes. All right, so 10 times 7, does that equal 70? Yes. And so by doing this, we've now determined that the rule, the rule for this is that it's our unknown, right? In this case, we have the letter G. I'm going to put G. So G times 7 is going to give us a W, all right? So G times 7 will give us a W, all right? So if that's the case, now we can plug in our numbers. We know that our G is 15. So 15 times 7 is going to give us our W, because that's our unknown. And so by looking at this, we can say 15 times 7. OK, 7 times 5, that puts a 5 down. 3 goes up. Three times, 7 times 1 plus 3, 105. And so we can put into our table an answer of 105. And so we can understand this relatively simple function. Let's try another one says find the missing numbers in this function table. Now this table, it actually kind of gives us the pattern already. It says our, our input is a G, right? But our output is going to be 3G plus 2. So 3 times G plus 2. And so it tells us what we need to do to solve. So we can go ahead and, and right away and solve. So if I have G as 3, right? If I plug it in, 3 times, right, the unknown, that's our G, plus 2. So 3 times 3, that equals 9, plus 2 equals 11. All right, that definitely agrees here, so let's figure this out. All right, now we got to find our unknown ideas. All right, if we go, okay, 3 times our unknown, plus 2 is going to give us an answer of 14 this time. Okay, well, how are we going to solve this? To solve this, we're going to start to rearrange things. We're going to rearrange things so that we can understand what we need to do. And by rearranging, we're going to move things around. All right. And by moving things around, we'll be able to come up with an answer. All right. And the basic rule is if I do it to one side, I do it to the other side. So for example, if I subtract a 2 here, and then I subtract a 2 on this side. Now I'm left with 3 times an unknown of G equals 14. So because I did it to this side, and I also do it to that side, and now it's equal, right? Because I subtracted 2 from both sides. And so now it's, sorry, this isn't right. I should just say 12. 3G equals 12. Well, G must then be 4, because 12 divided by 3 equals 4. And we can check our work, right? 3 times 4. That's 12 plus 2 equals 14. All right, we did it right. How about the next one? All right, this time we just have to plug it in. So 3 times 5 gives us 15 plus 2 gives us 17. And once again, we have this idea, right? We have 3 times a G plus a 2 equals a 23. So then as we look at this, we can say, okay, I'll just subtract this 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. And so that leaves me with a 3 times a G equals 21. That means that this must be 7, because 21 divided by 3 equals 7. And so we have these examples that show us how to work with the function tables. Part 2 is going to explore this a little bit more. 
All right, part two of looking at functions is understanding how to graph functions. And graphing functions is not a difficult process, but it, it does take a little bit of work to set it all up and make sure it's neat. So we start by looking at this idea. It says graph this function. We see our inputs and outputs. We see our x's and y's. Our first column is our x's, and of course that means it's going to come in line with our x-axis. Compared to our second column, which is our y, which is going to come in time with our y-axis. So we're able to do that. Now, as we look at the numbers themselves, right? It's you're going to start by drawing your black lines to show your axes, but then you got to figure out, okay, what what do my individual marks what increments do I need to increase by to make it successful? Now, in this case, it's all drawn out for you because, well, because I did it. That's why. But reasonably, right, we see a progression. 2, 6, 8, 10. And so going up by 2 makes a lot of sense because it's going to, one, it's going to cover all our values and it's going to get us to the answer that we want to do. All right. Then from there, how do we graph this function? You've worked with coordinate planes, you've worked with um, coordinates, and really a function is that idea. Is this first idea right here really could be rewritten 0, 2, just like that. So this is our x axis, this is our y axis. So we start by going 0 on the x axis. So if we're going this way, here's 0, right here, and then it says go. Well, that's zero. All right, so next we're going to go y axis two and we're going to go up two. So we're going to go up to here and just to make this just a little bit happier. Boom. There's our first point, zero, two. Okay, from there we can move on. All right, x, two, six. I go over to the two, I go up to the six, and I have a two, six. Four, eight, four, eight. That doesn't make sense. This is not what this function should be. It should say 0, 4. Oh, man. Now I'm really confusing you guys. Anyway, 4, 8, 6, 10, like that. And as I'm looking at the rule, if we were to determine this rule, this I have a typo there. That should be 4 there, right? Because 0, 4, right? You can see how it's a plus 4 each time then. And that's really what the rule of this function is. Somehow I messed that up. All right, so that's going to take this smiley face and move it like that. However, now that we have everything in the right place, all right, we can say, okay, well, this this makes a really nice, all right, I can connect my dots now. Oh, man, crossed out the smiley face. It's a sad day, right? And I have a nice straight line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put arrows, right, an arrow saying this can keep going. This can keep going. It doesn't have to stop here. And if we got really technical, we could technically put an arrow on this side because we could deal with negative numbers and stuff too. But you guys don't have to worry about negative numbers quite yet. We're going to stick with the positive. And so we can put that ray there to say this line is going to keep going. Because if I were to continue my table and say 8, right, it's going to be a plus 4, so it's going to be a 12. So I'd be able to go 8 over up to, right, the 12 would be somewhere way up here. And so we have that idea. So graphing the functions, right? that's kind of a review of coordinate planes. Um, but that's what you're going to be working with as you deal with functions. So first is figuring out the table. Second is graphing it. So here you have an example to get you on your way. And it's going to work with, it's going to make you think a little bit, but take some time, think about it. Create a function table for it, and then um, graph the ordered pairs to see what kind of line or shape is formed through this process. All right, that's lesson 96 for sixth grade.